Hi, oh, yes, and welcome to our game with myself, Ger Brown, where we're going to discuss Fort Moe Farrow from Saturday's Art Ireland football semi final, where Tyrone stunned Kerry 3 14 to 22 points in Crow Park in the exhilaration game of football, just like the other Art Ireland semi final, going all the way to extra time. I'm delighted to be joined by former Limerick and Tipperary manager, and of course, Kerry native Liam Kearns to go through this. Liam, how was all with yourself? Good, thanks, uh, Gerard. Yeah, so I suppose about three or four days on now with Wednesday since last Saturday. Is the post motion still very much in full flow down in Kerry? Oh, I would think so, yeah. I would think so. Um, very disappointing result um, and indeed performance. And um, I would say the post mortem will go on for a long time yet. Yeah, I suppose, obviously, we all know about the complications coming into this game. It was originally meant to be played the 15th of August, the day after the Dublin Mayo game. Then we heard the outbreak Tyrone camp. It was put back until August 21st. Tyrone still said they wouldn't be able to make that date. Pretty much kind of back the GA into a corner. As At as the time, it looked like Kerry were going to get by straight into an Ireland final, which would have been a very bizarre situation. Kerry Camp came out and said they wanted the game. Overall, in general, I suppose all this kind of uncertainty and everything else like that, would it be fair to say that despite the fact Tyrone were the ones that obviously had the COVID issue, that maybe it slightly affected Kerry more in terms of didn't really kind of know if but they were coming or going. Yeah, well, I'd say it affected both teams because look, you you plan you plan your date from your date backwards. You plan your training and and your preparation, and the date, as you said, was two weeks ago. So um, you would have planned your preparations to have your team ready to play two weeks ago, and to be told then a week out that hold on a minute, this isn't happening. Um, that 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 you know puts out both teams really. You know, um, obviously Tyrone. Uh, didn't want it to happen because of their COVID situation, but Kerry certainly did, and I've no doubt it did put out uh, Kerry uh, to a certain extent. Yeah, there's a good bit of talk as well of the after game that Tyrone, as I think any county does when they come through us, they come through a battle hard and campaign. While they might have had a relatively comfortable enough victory against Cav, and you know they had two tough games against Donegal and Monaghan, we had the Kerry kind of point of view where they came through Munster as expected, on testing quite easy, and in truth probably only really had the Dublin League game as kind of a test this year. And a lot was kind of made of that, but I'm not quite so sure if that's kind of true. We've seen it down through the years in Leinster. Dublin have breezed through that problem, so that was a test. It's never bothered them. Even Mayo and James Horne's first time around, they used to win Connor quite comfortably, never seemed to bother them. And in truth, with no disrespect to their teams in Munster, if Kerry were getting tested by them teams, you would be quite worried if you're a Kerry fan then going into the semi final. Yeah, well, I suppose Cork would have been expected to test them, and they didn't. Uh, Cork didn't show up. Um, Tipperary, Tipperary put uh, two sweepers in and 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 parked the bus basically against them. So um, that wasn't a real test for them either. Um, and then Clare really didn't play as well as they're capable of either in Killarney. So um, I felt Kerry didn't get any tests, but I think. The most important thing for me anyway was that Kerry seemed to show what they were about in winning Munster. Um, you know, we saw the full press from Kerry. We saw uh, what subs were being brought on, when they were being brought on. Um, we saw their, their their good points. And obviously, we, what we didn't see was how they would react uh, to the intensity that Tyrone brought um, last Sunday. And unfortunately for Kerry, uh, the reaction wasn't as good as it should have been. Um, and, you know, to their detriment. Um, the reality is that, um, you know, 35 turnovers and two nines scored off 35 turnovers tells you everything you need to know about Kerry's prepared, preparedness for Tyrone and the challenge that they brought. Yeah, it's amazing how kind of a viewpoint can change well after Saturday because we've seen in the Munster final, maybe against abject opposition in the Cork team, as you said, that might just have showed up in the day. David Clifford was held scorers from play and everyone's kind of like well looking at all the, all the other attacking options to have not overly reliant on, on david clifford because loads of lads shipped in but if you look at the last day like he scored six points from play and outside of that you're stroking to see where many players score from play paul guinea got a point in extra time paul his brother ends up with two points from play sean o'shea he did end up with eight points but i think only one of them was also from open play and suddenly now the kind of question is gone from kerry having loads of attacking options to are they just over reliant on david clifford yeah, well, I mean, there's a number of things. Like, uh, Kerry had 100% of their own kickouts because Tyrone didn't press them. They had 40% of Tyrone's kickouts, um, especially the ones that went long. They won them all. So they had Tyrone in trouble in their own kickouts. That's a huge amount of possession. Uh, they played against 14 men for 20 minutes. So they had a huge amount of possession. They were playing against 14 men in Crow Park in very good conditions. 
and uh, we, 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 we didn't win the match. You know, that's the reality of it for Kerry. And those stats are damning, to be honest. Um, and, and then, of course, the other stat that I just mentioned, 35 turnovers and conceding 2-9. It's as if we didn't expect Tyrone to defend the way they did and to hit us on the break the way they did. I mean, their four full, their three full backs got a point each um, and their wing back, Peter Hart, got a point. And, uh, you know, they all came from turnovers and, and then attacking from there. Kerry didn't seem to uh, track the runners. Um, they didn't walk as hard as them, and they, they brought the ball into cul-de-sacs and into the the, the um, defence that was Tyrone, and uh, got turned over, as I said. And, and as I said, to concede two nine from turnovers, just uh, you're not going to win. You're not going to win all Ireland semi-finals with those kind of stats. But at the same time, when they had the amount of possession they had, and as you said, we were supposed to have the best attacking options in the country. You've got to ask why? Why was it only David Clifford that got the scores? My view, we did, we ran into the wall of defenders time and time again when we should have been kicking points from range and we should have been um, make, bringing wit to the pitch. If Dublin were playing Tyrone last Sunday, they'd have brought wit to the pitch and they wouldn't have played it on Tyrone's terms. They would have, um, in my opinion, they would have uh, slowed the game down and 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 in, put, increased the pace of the game when it suited them and not play it. Um, the way Kerry did on Tyrone's terms from start to finish. The only thing we 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 did that that, that discomforted um, Tyrone was we we beat them on their long kickouts. They they couldn't um, beat us on the long kickouts, and um, but 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 we didn't turn that into scores. So um, yeah, very very disappointing. No, no matter what way you look at it from Kerry's point of view, it's a very very disappointing performance and result. Yeah, like you mentioned there. There's two 10-minute periods where Kerry played with an extra man. They lost one of them, I think, by two points and only won the other one by a point of failure to kind of make hay when they had the opportunity. I was even looking as well, which is very bizarre for a game that went to 90 minutes. I was looking at the impact of the bench from both teams. and Both teams actually only have one score each from their substitutes, but the big difference is Jim O'Connor only contributed a point for Kerry, whereas you had Conor McShane scoring 1-3 for Tyrone and 1-2 of them coming from, from open play. And in general, now this kind of continues to lead to another... Bit of a prolonged famine in Kerry. Obviously, we know about that famine that happened during the 80s and 90s. So they went 11 years between mm. 86 and 97 out in Ireland. Ireland. You know, even if Kerry win the Ireland next year at the next available time length, it's going to be eight years. It's one in Ireland in the turn of the last decade. So that's one in 13 years. If you go back as far as 2009. And even general kind of question marks, a small bit about this team. Well, there's no doubt about it. The talent is there. But maybe just kind of that mental kind of side of kind of seeing out games. They were a point up into the last, uh, I think, three minutes of normal time, an extra man against Dublin two years ago, didn't see it out. They failed to score for that from the 62nd minute uh, onwards in the replay of that game. I think they ended up being six minutes of injury time, so that's 14 minutes without a score. And then the shock defeat last year as well against Cork. Yeah, um, they were all very different. Um, the Cork game conditions were terrible, and, um, you know, it was very difficult to play good football in that game. Uh, again, they missed a lot of chances and um conceded a very poor goal just at the death um you know that 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 was that was a hugely disappointing defeat the dublin game um you know was very much in the balance um and you know that was a that was a, a really tight affair um the game last sunday though you know that the problem or saturday i should say um you know that that was it's very hard to explain that as i said for the, the reason being for the stats we've given and and um it just feels like, uh, you know, Kerry didn't prepare for, weren't prepared for the challenge that Tyrone brought, and and they managed to lose a game that that all the stats say you should win at any level if you if you have the amount of possession that Kerry had, and if you're playing against 14 men for 20 minutes, you know that 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 those those burdens should should kill the opposition, and uh, you know great credit due to Tyrone that it didn't. Um, and they're, you know, they're defending. I, I'd have to say, I admire their defending and the walk rate, their walk ethic. They walked like, like dogs, really. Um, you know, um, as the, the boys in the own would say, they roll like dogs. Well, the boys walked, the Tyrone boys walked like, you know, like dogs all through that game. And uh, you know, to see them chasing down players uh, three and four together. Um, but at the same time, I, I still feel that Kerry played into their barrow by by trying to go uh, through the middle and trying to go at the bodies and try to take on carrying the ball in time and again and it being turned over. And, and the problem then was that they repeated those mistakes right to the finish. And that was a huge issue for me. Yeah, you could say there was shades of 2003 about Tyrone's play 
in that game in 2021, even though they are meant to be playing this little bit more expansive football. And the questions now are going to come towards on Peter Kane and whether he'll be on the line for 2022. I've seen something in the Irish Independent say that reporting that the county board and Kerry are willing to give uh, Peter a fourth year in charge if he wants it, that they're not going to rush into the decision. They're going to allow both parties kind of to take their mind over it. There is the view as well that if he is going to stay on, that he probably would have to shake up his backroom team. We've seen a kind of discussion on the Sunday game, Sunday night. Kevin McStay was trying to make the point that, you know, still, you know, he's got a decent CV there with a couple of months of titles, a league title, a shared league title for this year. But I think as Tomas O'Shea, O'Shea hit home, who would like to see a shake up management, they're not what to really kind of judge down and carry. And it is all about whether you bring home Sam Maguire or not for the winter. Yeah, unfortunately, that is the standards they set for themselves. That's why they have 33 all Irelands or however many all Irelands they have. And, um, you know, that's the standard in Kerry. You know, nobody takes any notice of how many Munster titles they've won, how many leagues they've won. It's all about all Irelands. And that's 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 the reality in Kerry. Um, and the fact is that they haven't won an all Ireland. As you said, they've won one in, what, 11 years. So, you know, thanks be to God for that one, because if it wasn't, it would be considered a famine now at this stage. Um, yeah, it's up to Kerry to decide whether Peter Kane stays on or not. And, and Peter Keane himself, I'm sure, uh, will have something to say on that. And I'm sure the players will have something to say on it as well. Um, I would say all parties will have to, um, you know, come together and make a decision on that. Um, but certainly, I think uh, both the management and the players will have to take uh, joint responsibility for uh, that performance last Sunday. And I'm pretty sure that um, there won't be too many of them happy with, with um, how that game turned out or why they lost the game or how they lost the game. And uh, after that, then, as I said, decisions will be made at some stage, I'm sure, when, when things settle down. Where's your mind leaning towards yourself and what you would like to see happen with Kerry management for for next year? Um, no, I don't have a strong view on it. I, I mean, uh, I, I think, you know, you've got to be in the camp and you've got to know what has gone on or how they went about their business. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not in that camp. I'm away from that camp. I, I'm, I'm only an outsider looking in. Um, I would be very, very disappointed with the performance, with how the game was played, with how the team performed, how they went about trying to win the game. Um, and for all that I've already said, but uh, as I said, it, it, it's for people on the ground in Kerry to, to, to make decisions about um, whether uh, the management did a good job or whether the players did a good job or whether, um, you know, as I said, the players will have a big say um, in the management and rightly so. And so will um, the county board, I'm sure. And Peter Keane and his management team, you know, a county management is a tough job. Um, they're three years at it. Three years is a long time, um, you know, when you in, in, in terms of managing county teams. And um, you've got to reinvent yourself on a yearly basis. And every year counts. And in Kerry, they've had three now very poor championship defeats. So uh, certainly, I'm sure all parties will look at, at, at themselves in the mirror. And I'm sure they'll come up to, they'll come to a, a conclusion in the best interest of Kerry football. And uh, I think it's important that they do. Yeah, I found it interesting just seeing bits and pieces from the Irish Examiner football podcast where Jack Connor said he still holds armors and aspirations of taking charge of Kerry for a third time. Quite interesting considering only last week I think he was reconfirmed as Kadir manager again for next year. But I suppose, look, if Peter was to step aside, you know, a lot of people kind of feel, you know, Kerry might be as near as well off to go back to either Jack or Eamon Fitzmaurice because there doesn't seem to be too many people putting their hand up and others likes of, as we're going to maybe discuss, Tomas O'Shea joining Offaly for next year, learning his apprenticeship. Kieran Donnelly as well, Declan Sullivan doing 21s. And Jack would know quite a lot of these players from his time as minor manager and under 21 over the last couple of years. Yeah, um, yeah, his stint at minor and under 21 didn't go very well. Um, no, All Ireland won at, at under 21, and he read the, whatever about the minor. Um, but two with minor, yeah. Yeah, he's done. He's he had he won a few All Irelands at minor level, but we didn't transfer him into under 20, yeah. not to mine senior, really. Um, now I will say D- David Clifford and Sean O'Shea going straight to senior didn't help the under 20s to go on or under 20 or under 21, whichever grade you want to talk about, to go on and win it. The reality though is that none of the minors have transferred uh, the success into the under 20 or under 21 grade, uh, under 20 it is now. So, um yeah, uh, look, going back, back to the future, as they say, I don't, I don't know. Is that a good thing? Um, is that, is that what you'd be trying to do? I, again, that's something for Eamon Fitzmaurice and Jack O'Connor to consider. Jack O'Connor, I think, has given six years to the Kerry Senior setup. I think Eamon Fitzmaurice has done likewise. 
uh, very demanding job. They, they, they'd have to, um, I'm sure, have to take on board, um, you know, the demands of the job and, and whether they're in a position to give 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 it their time again. But, um, you know, I think in fairness to Jack Connor on the podcast he was on, I believe, um, he said that, you know, it's it's an honour to marry, to, to manage Kerry. And uh, I believe he referred to him as the Man United of, of, yeah. of Gaelic football or whatever. But, like, was he putting himself forward uh, for the job, I, yeah, that some people seem to take it that he was, but I don't know. I mean, again, that's something for the Kerry management or the Kerry uh, County Board and and and, and um, the the people running the the Kerry affairs to consider or to look at. Um, as you say, if he's Kildare manager for next year, well, then he, he can't manage both two teams. Um, that's the situation there. Uh, Amos Morris again, I, I couldn't speak for him as Morris. I don't know what he'll do. And um, yeah, I mean, look, on things settled, on the, on the, until, until things settle down, I'm sure we won't know uh, who's in contention for the Kerry job. Is Peter Keane, as you said, going to do another year or are they going to, to bring in new management or what, what, what they are going to do? Certainly we won't know anything about that for, for some time yet, I'm sure. I'm sure they will take stock. I'm sure they will have, have plenty of um, uh, plenty of of things to look over before they go make, making any decision or to start the process even. And uh, I'm sure that they will they will they will come to their conclusions in time. Yeah, it's actually something I noticed during the summer of them five Kerry minor teams that won All Ireland in a row. They've all now passed through either under twenty or under twenty one grade without landing a single All Ireland in a couple of years. They actually never even got outside of Munster. So as you mentioned, I suppose the likes of Jeremy O'Connor. Sean O'Shea, David Clifford missing out years in that grade when that rule came in probably didn't really help Kerry's case in that. Just looking ahead quickly then to the final, obviously a novel pairing with Mayo and Tyrone the first time ever. I think no one expected either of these two sides to be in the final this year. They were both kind of viewed as teams in transition despite the fact Mayo got to final last year. Tyrone under new management after so long. Both obviously have extra time victories in the semi-final. A little bit of backs against the job maybe more so in Mayo's cases in the camp behind. Tyrone were always fairly in control of this game. How would you see it going on Saturday week? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think Mayo have a great chance here um, because, I, you know, they have a good, they have a good, um, uh, very good uh, record against their own. Um, I think that of the last four or five meetings in the championship, Mayo have come out on top in two or three, if not four of those. Um, so uh, Mayo have, have, won't fear Tyrone, and um, I, I don't think Mayo will will um, will make the mistakes that Kerry made. Uh, certainly, I don't see them having thirty five turnovers and score and Tyrone scoring two nine off those turnovers. Um, and I think Mayo have seen what Tyrone are going to bring. The one question mark I would have from Mayo's point of view, I don't know are their forwards uh, good enough to to run up um, you know a winning total. Whereas I I think Tyrone forwards, if Tyrone release their forwards, they've got. I would have a lot of time for McShane. Uh, and there must be a chance he'll start. Um, Donnelly is 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 a top class forward. Um, they brought on off the bench again, and I mean their bench was far superior to Kerry's um, last Sunday. You know, and McShane, as you said, scored one three, but they brought on um, young Canavan, who I thought made yeah. an awful difference as well. He he definitely caused problems for the Kerry defence. Tiernan McCann came off the bench and he also played well and made a, a solid contribution. And they also have um, Mark, uh, I can't think of his second name, uh, Bradley. Mark That's Bradley, right, yeah. who's also a, a very tasty forward. So um, I just think that that, that Tyrone ha, have, have tastier forwards than, and better forwards than, than, than Mayo. Um, but Mayo, again, the, and, and as we know, the Tyrone backs are very capable of scoring also. The, the, the three full backs scored, as I said, Peter Hart scored. Their, their half backs, their half forwards and half backs can interchange, and that's a feature of their play. Um, in fairness to Mayo, they have a few backs that can score also, and they have a couple of very good attacking backs. I still would worry about their 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 forward line as to how much their forward line would score and whether they can run up a, win, a winning total. Um, other than that, though, I think um, Mayo have every every chance in this game, and um, and I, I you know I, I I suppose I'm like a lot of people. I I'd be hoping that they finally reach the, the promised land, uh, even though I think uh, they're going to earn it to to beat Tyrone. As a man living in West Roscommon on the board, I'm not sure if I share quite the same optimism, but. I think we can all say to do land if we can't begrudge them. They've lost enough now at this stage. It, certainly, there's no doubt about it. They've got a great opportunity and it should be a fantastic final on Saturday of the week. Just interesting, as we touched on Tomas O'Shea, kind of, he made it quite clear on, on the Sunday game, Sunday night, he would like to see a shake up in the carry management. 
He's joined the management team himself today. He's confirmed he's joined Offaly for 2022. It was a good year for Offaly football, obviously getting promoted from Division 3 to the National League and then defeating Ross Common that under 20 um, semi final or even final, I should say, sorry, a couple of weeks ago in Crow Park. He has a little bit of experience. I know he's been involved with UCC before in Sigerson. He's with Glam Mayor and Cork this year. Won something with the minors last year, involved in the intermediate team this year. But it'll be a, be a good step up and another ex carry player learning his uh, apprenticeship, you could say. Yeah, it's a strange one. Um, I don't know where the Offaly connection came from, but um, it's an interesting one to see where he is. Uh, certainly, um, Offaly are making good strides in football and indeed hurling now. Um, Michael Dagman seems to have made a huge difference going in as chairman there. And it's great to see it. I'm delighted to see Offaly coming back. Um, I was very impressed with their under-20 team that won the All-Ireland. Uh, I was also impressed with their senior team. I thought their senior team played very well this year too and um, deserved to be promoted. Um, so I think um, th certainly Offaly football is on the rise um, I don't know um, as seemingly Michael Dignan and Tomás O'Shea are good friends so maybe that's the connection that brought him to Offaly but uh, yeah he's he's gone in as a selector I, I don't know will he be coaching as well but uh, certainly yeah it's an introduction to inter-county football and uh, uh, you know he's, he's involved with club and he, he started with UCC so it'll be interesting to see um, It'd be no harm maybe to get him out of the 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 uh, Sunday game chair and and to see him uh, get his hands dirty and to see uh, can he can he back up uh, can he back up what he's saying in the Sunday game. But Tomas is uh, I'm sure he'll be he'll be an addition to Gal to Offaly and I have to say it's it's a good it's a very good appointment from Offaly's point of view and uh, it'd be very interesting to see how he gets on. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he gets on the line this year at intermediate level in Cork with Glen Mayer as I. Touched on as well, and as I mentioned in the intro, you're of course former Limerick and Tipperary manager, but you're still on the line yourself at club level in Roscommon with Clonagail. Your second year in charge, you got your second championship game this weekend against your local neighbours, Poor Pierces. But you made a winning start two weeks ago, leaving it late with an Alton Harney goal to beat Strokestown. Yeah, um, we've we've a lot of um, we've had a, we've a lot of flux and change to be honest. Um, you know, when I went down there, I talked to three players: Donny Shine, Carl Shine, and. Uh, Alton Harney, who I, I coached in, 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 in Roscommon um, some years previously. And uh, Donny's gone, has retired. Um, Carl Shine is not available to this year, just this year either. Um, and um, Alton Harney has been uh, very in and out with injuries and so on. So we have a lot of issues, a lot of problems, a lot of changeovers. Um, so we're, we, we did well, I think, to beat Strokestown in Strokestown. And uh, yeah, we're up against the, uh, playing Pierce as I think their favourites for the championship um, on Friday night. But having said that, um, you know we're 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 preparing. We've prepared as well as we can. We will be down a few bodies, but we we we'll see we'll see how that game goes. And um, yeah, hopefully we get out of the group and and uh, that that our injuries clear up as we go along. You know, as I say, the championship is is a uh, is is not a sprint. It's it's all about um, improving as you go along and and trying to hit the 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 peaks at the right time. Um, as uh, Tyrone hit their peak and, and Limerick Hurlers hit their peak, but uh, as we found out, Kerry didn't. And uh, hopefully, Clonagale will hit their peak at the right time. Yeah, to touch on, obviously, you were involved in the coaching role at Roscommon, I think, John Evans back in, in 2015. So you would have had a fair idea of the grasp of Roscommon club football when you took the job at Clonagale. And there's no two ways about that little pocket down the south end of the county between yourselves, St. Bridges, and Pork Pierce. This is kind of heavily dominant, I think. The winner has come from one of the entry clubs in the last three years. Would you have been kind of aware, and even I'd say you've probably become more noticeable the last couple of years from playing in clubs, just how intense the rivalry can be there? I was just looking even at the role of honour, like Clon with 21, Bridgetson with 17. There's you know, not really much between them. Yeah, there's a there's a great rivalry there. And um, in a very small area, there are they're, they're three great clubs. Um, three very strong clubs and uh, with huge traditions. And uh, I have to say the, the, the rivalry is intense. Um, Pierce has beat us in the semi-final last year. We were robbed, really. I, I think we should, again, it's a game we should have won. We hit the crossbar and we we um, we should have had a penalty we didn't get. We gave them a soft goal. We missed freeze and we missed chances outside of that and uh, only lost the game by a pint. So we were really disappointed with that. Pierce has then got beat by Bridgets in the final and that was um, a big surprise and a big shock because Bridgets were, were considered to be very young at the time. Um, but now, again, I would imagine Bridgets and Pierce is, uh, are probably favourites for the championship again this year. So, it's a very there as i said in a small area it's a very very strong three very very strong clubs and um there's no love lost between any of them as you can imagine and uh, they'll all be they'll all be trying to outdo each other in the in the championship but uh yeah we 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 just have to wait and see what what comes of that 
And say in terms of COVID last year, obviously played havoc with the year. You know, pretty much fighting into two. This year was kind of delayed start. I know even kind of playing myself, a lot of the things like in terms of going training still the same. You know, no getting togged in at matches. It all has to be outdoors in the cars and stuff like that. Do you still find though that you have had maybe a better run from a management point of view in terms of preparation compared to last year? Well, last year we had twenty five sessions in total, and uh, I think six matches or seven matches. Um, five of those were championship matches. So I mean, last year, really and truly, you know, I, 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 I you know, I, I had hardly a time to get to know the players, not to mind, um, not to mind prepare them. Uh, this year has been better. Um, we have something like 35, 36 uh, training sessions done at the moment now, and um, you know, we've had four or five challenge matches as well as uh, three league matches. So um, it's been better, but still strange and and still difficult, as you said, togging out and you know, in, in a in a uh, you know in the stand and going on to the field training and then straight home afterwards you know it's, it's it's a strange environment because there's no mixing and there's no bonding or there's no um the boys aren't able to have you know the banter that you would have in a dressing room scenario um and so it is it is still strange but look in the in the present circumstances we're delighted to be playing football and i think the lads um are enjoying what we're doing and uh, you know we, we, we're just all thrilled to be to be playing football, and and uh, even as I said, it's not ideal circumstances, but certainly it's it seems to be coming back. We're, we're going to have um, a crowd at the match tomorrow, tomorrow or Friday night, and uh, it's great to see that. And hopefully the, the GA next year will will return to normal, and we'll get back to normal preparations and and crowds at matches again. You know. Yeah, bit by bit, fingers crossed, we are slightly getting there, even with the new roadmap, is it? Touch on as well, there'll be a good buzz at that game Friday night. Under lights as well, as seen today, we're scoring GA or streaming it. So I think there will be a lot of interest in general throughout the county for that game. Liam, anyway, thanks very much for taking the time out today for chatting, I suppose, all things between your own involvements and Kerry. And best of luck, I suppose, with the rest of your journey and adventure this year with Clonagale. Thanks very much, Jared. Cheers, Liam. Cheers. Thanks.